Let's do it. Hey everyone, my name is Lauren and welcome to Skeptic She. As some of you may know, I'm a musician and up until this point, music was the sole focus of this channel. While I do still plan to post about that here, I really wanted to start sharing my experiences as a former Christian and a new-ish skeptic. YouTube's community of secular creators helped me immensely in my deconversion and I really wanted to add my own perspective to their conversations. With all of that said, let's start with the very abridged story of how I went from Christian to atheist. Now, as a disclaimer, I will not be debunking any so-called proofs for God in this video, such as the cosmological, teleological, or moral arguments. For this video, I just want to lay out the basics of what caused me to intermittently doubt and ultimately abandon my faith. Let me also state that belief, or lack thereof, is not a choice. I argue that what we truly believe is based on a combination of biological predispositions, environment, and knowledge gained. I'm an atheist because given my tendency to think critically, and given no verifiable evidence for a god, I cannot honestly accept any claims that a god exists. To be clear, I am not an atheist out of rebellion, anger, or trauma, though I do have some misgivings with the church, but that's for another video or videos. With that, here's my story. I was raised Roman Catholic, attended a Catholic school, went to church every Wednesday and Sunday, and while I appreciate the advanced curriculum I was able to receive in private school, I was exposed early on to discrepancies between biblical and scientific explanations for the universe. For example, my second grade teacher taught all about dinosaurs and paleontology and that dinosaurs lived well before humans did. In keeping with that, my third grade teacher taught us about evolutionary theory and and our early hominid ancestors. However, my sixth grade teacher taught biblical literalism and young earth creationism, which is the belief that God created the universe and humans at the same time around 6,000 years ago. I distinctly remember one boy in that class asking, what if evolution was real, but God made it happen? To which the teacher responded something like, well, that's not what it says in the Bible, so that's not how it happened. Frankly, this unwavering trust in the Bible didn't make sense to me even then. Also, a family member who studied astronomy taught me that from Earth we can view light from stars that existed well before the supposed 6,000 year start date of the universe. These are just a few examples, but since I was still very impressionable, I didn't think much of these differences in teachings. For the majority of my time as a Christian, I believed that God and scientific evidence were not mutually exclusive, and that science just provided further proof of God's existence and his love for us. Now, the rhetoric of biblical literalism was much more prevalent when I attended a Missouri Synod Lutheran high school. In fact, young earth creationism was really the only accepted belief there. As one of very few Catholic students, my teachers and classmates often felt threatened by what I was raised to believe. They found me idolatrous for praying to the saints, even Mary, the mother of God, and they accused me of sinfully picking and choosing from the Bible for not taking the Garden of Eden story literally, yet believing the gospel as truth. There are a lot of funny and somewhat disturbing stories I could tell you from my high school years, but we'll leave it at that for now. As I finished high school, the differences I observed between Catholics and Protestants became a little overwhelming, yet I still found our foundational beliefs to be the same. The gospel of Jesus Christ and our relationship to him was what mattered, and as long as we were on the same page with that, my Christianity was unshaken. The biggest shocks to my faith came when I left behind those 13 years of Christian private schooling and attended a public university. And yes, this will be a classic case of education making a heathen. Knowing that I would no longer be taught the gospel and surrounded by fellow Christians in the classroom, I felt an enormous responsibility to take my faith into my own hands, to hold fast to it and not take it for granted. I sought out Christian friends both on and off campus, and I found that the majority of them didn't identify as any particular denomination. To them, being in a relationship with Jesus was more important than any of the rituals or rigidity of the denominations that I had grown up to believe, and that was very appealing to me. I threw myself into getting to know God better than I ever had before, and I attended regular Bible studies helped lead the worship band at my church. I went to confession once and even prayed out loud over people on the street who were experiencing homelessness. I also avoided relationships with non-Christian men, or if I really liked them, I tried to proselytize to them. Missionary dating is gross. 
please don't do it. But to say that I was all in for Jesus is very much an understatement. But since I was exposed to a multitude of perspectives in college, doubts about my faith crept up on me quite a bit. Now some instances of that doubt were small, like when my roommate and I were discussing the differences between Jesus' words and Paul's words in the Bible, and wondering why they were given the same level of authority. It could even be argued that they contradicted each other. I also had passing curiosity about how people in other parts of the world could find Christ without having been raised into Christianity or having been raised to believe in different or no gods at all. I was sure that billions of other non-Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, etc. wondered the same things about those raised differently from them. So was my belief in Jesus really so universal and immune to criticism? Above all of those little moments, definitely the most damning debunking of my faith came when I was taking a class called New Testament as Literature, which is what it sounds like. We learned how the New Testament was written and constructed into what Christians now call the Gospel. I signed up for the class as one more way to achieve closeness to God, but it ended up doing quite the opposite. I'm a little embarrassed to say that I was 21 or 22 and only just learning about the history of what I believed was God's word. I had heard snippets about the Council of Nicaea before, but I had never actually taken an entire semester-long class dedicated to teaching how the New Testament was put together. Nothing made me doubt my Christianity more strongly than learning about the small group of powerful men who decided what should and should not be kept as gospel, the arguably major discrepancy between Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and all of the stories that were left out because they were supposedly too unrealistic, the class made me feel very disillusioned, knowing that men who lived hundreds of years after Jesus and Paul allegedly did decided what Christians should believe. They had limited resources to clear up any bad translations or contradictions, but thanks to a few theocracies and eventually the printing press, billions of people would be indoctrinated with Christianity, for millennia, and I was one of them. Yet after all that, I still held on to what would become the last shreds of my faith. I dove even deeper into Christian apologetics, continued to lead the worship band at my church, prayed with friends, and studied the Bible on my own terms. Some of my personal heroes at the time included William Lane Craig, C.S. Lewis, John Piper, and even the infamous Morris Hill pastor Mark Driscoll. Now it wasn't until after college that a simple conversation ended up tipping the scales and the end of my faith became imminent. I was out on my friend's porch after we had band practice and we we somehow got to talking about our beliefs. It was a really simple and brief conversation and I don't remember all the details, but I distinctly remember this friend referring to intercessory prayer in church as just group thought. Later that night when I argued if Christianity were really a lie, it could never have lasted thousands of years, he replied, are you sure about that? About simple challenges like this couldn't have touched my faith just a couple of years prior. But with two decades of doubts built up in my head, it wasn't going to take much more scrutiny for me to start to realize I had been hoodwinked. So finally I was ready to challenge my Christian beliefs on a level I was previously way too scared to. Shortly after that brief porch argument with my friend, I spent days Days pouring over videos and blogs of ex-Christians sharing their stories of doubt and deconversion. And I learned the differences through that between those who left Christianity out of anger or hurt and those who left simply due to a lack of evidence of any god, let alone the specific Judeo-Christian one. I definitely fell into the second camp and it felt great to know that there were so many people out there who had gone through the same things that I was going through, but that wasn't quite the end. My very last mustard seed of faith came from an ingrained fear of hell. I had heard nearly every apologist and pastor that I looked up to say that the only unforgivable sin was rejection of Christ, and that was the sin I was about to commit. Even though, again, belief, or lack thereof, isn't really a choice. So that's not really a fair game by God, but we won't go into that here. So I finally called a family member who had also recently deconverted to ask for advice about this, and all they said was, ask yourself if you really want to keep believing something out of fear. And with that, after hanging up the phone, my 23 years as a Christian was over. So to say the least, I was an a la carte Christian when it came to learning about God, and my intrigue on all those different levels kept me on the straight and narrow for a long time. Through all of that, though, I remained hyper-analytical, just the way God made me, and I never stopped asking why and how, and nothing doomed my faith more than that. That's my story, everyone. If you enjoyed it or learned something from it, 
Please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more. Thank you so much for watching. Keep asking questions and I will see you next time. Mustard seed. I'm so corny. Or am I so poopani? Oh my god, no. Oh your god.